Good evening, I'm Dr. Julie. I'm a board certified psychiatrist practicing in Georgia. And here on my channel and my page, the motto is we meditate, mobilize, and manifest the things that we want in life. I am gonna be talking about a little bit of a controversial topic today. And that topic is normalizing medications and how to actually be a positive support to your friends and family. Before I jump in, just a reminder, this information is for educational purposes only. It doesn't constitute individual medical or mental health advice. And if you do have questions about your mental health be sure to talk to your psychiatrist or your therapist so what brought me to this topic today is multiple conversations I've had in the last few weeks about medication particularly medication for mental health issues when I talk about mental health issues in this conversation I'm encompassing a wide range of things from depressed mood anxious feelings to trouble sleeping or what we call insomnia just the whole group of symptoms that may affect your mental health or your emotional health. I'm gonna give you a couple of scenarios just for thought as we enter into the conversation. Adult person who's generally healthy, um, except they have high blood pressure. So because they are you know, generally healthy and they're motivated for their care, let's say they um, follow recommendations to limit salt in their diet, which for some people can um, contribute to high blood pressure. They exercise, they eat lots of fruits and vegetables. They take all of the recommendations from their doctor to manage their blood pressure, but their blood pressure stays high. But let's say this person really doesn't want to take medication they want to try to do things the natural way they try natural treatments um things i've heard like apple cider vinegar that are natural treatments to help blood pressure supplements they get over the counter to help um, blood pressure but it stays high and let's imagine that it stays high for their lifetime to the point where they get older and they end up having a stroke so the person had high blood pressure they did all of the things they could do to manage their blood pressure but it stayed high they didn't take medication they end up having a stroke in their later years Imagine that same person opting to actually take a medication to keep their blood pressure under control. And let's say they try a medication and they have side effects a couple of times, but they end up finding something that they can take that doesn't cause them negative side effects and they're able to go throughout life with blood pressure that's managed well, such that when they get older, they can avoid having a stroke. Okay, I want you to keep that case in mind. And then the next case I'm gonna to talk to you about is a person who has um, depression. So a person has, let's say, again, average healthy person develops symptoms of depression. So they have sadness every day, they can't find pleasure or enjoyment out of life, they have trouble um, sleeping well, they have problems with appetite, they can't focus, they have low energy, and sometimes they even have thoughts that it would be better off if they weren't here. And because this person also likes to try natural things and doesn't wanna take medication, they seek out counseling um, through their uh, pastor, they have pastoral counseling at their church, they meditate, they exercise, they eat healthy, they do all of these things that will be recommended for a healthy lifestyle to help promote a positive mood, okay? But irrespective of that, the mood doesn't get better. And they stay chronically depressed to the point where they come home and all they wanna do is stay in the bed so they don't interact with their family. They start to have trouble at work because they can't get to work on time because they didn't sleep well. And eventually this person gets to the point where life just seems so unbearable that they actually do go to the store, get a medication that they can find there, overdose, in an attempt to um, end their life because they are so depressed that life doesn't seem worth living. And then let's imagine that same person who does all of those same things, right? The healthy things, eating healthy food, exercising, seeking counseling, and they still feel depressed, yet they actually do seek out a psychiatrist or another um, provider who can prescribe medications for depression, have their depression treated such that their course ends where they are able to maintain relationships with their children. They don't have problems at work, okay? And they can go through life not having to feel like every day is not worth living. I give those two scenarios because A, they're not uncommon. It's not uncommon for a person who has high blood pressure over a lifetime that's untreated to, not, to end up with a stroke or another type of um, cardiovascular or heart problem, okay? And sometimes when it, when it relates to mental health conditions, depression, it can be a life-threatening illness if suicide is in the picture. So both of those conditions, one that would be considered medical, right? The high blood pressure and the other one considered psychiatric can both have life altering complications, particularly if they are not treated appropriately. And so I say that these two examples because who is the healthy person? 
right? Is the person who did not take medication the healthy person in those scenarios? Or is a person who opted to do all the things that weren't medicine and take medicine, are they the healthy person? And why I think this is so important is that we live in this very interesting culture um, where we almost have a medication for everything, right? Um, and I think because of that, we have internalized these beliefs that if you are healthy, you are not on medication. And let me just tell you that that is so many times not true. So yes, people who don't take medication can be healthy and people who take medication can be healthy. I'm gonna repeat that again. People who take medication can be healthy. Just because you have to take a medication does not mean that you are not healthy or that you cannot engage in health-related behavior. And there are sometimes we have a genetic condition. We have a genetic predisposition. No matter what we do, right, we are going to have a condition, right? We're gonna develop high blood pressure or we're gonna develop diabetes despite all the other healthy behaviors we could do. And guess what? There is a large percentage of our health that's actually not based on anything that we have control of, right? We, for the most part, do not have control over the chemicals that are in our water, the pollutants that we breathe in our air. For a large part of my psychiatric career, I work with people who were homeless or who had low incomes and they always they do not always have access to food so let me say this if you are if it's six o'clock at night and you have to eat dinner and you're not going to be able to eat until the next afternoon are you going to eat a hamburger or are you going to eat a salad so people may say the salad is the healthier choice but if you know you have to go 12 or 13 hours just because you don't have the money or that's just the next time you'll be able to eat? Are you gonna pick something that's gonna be filling and satiating, something that's gonna fill you up? Or are you gonna eat a salad? I mean, most of us are gonna eat the hamburger. You can honestly be trying your very best and still have trouble managing your medical condition just with food or just with exercise. And I think as a medical establishment, we have to acknowledge the privilege that comes from telling people these recommendations. You know, eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day well some people may be able to do that and have it fresh or have it frozen but everyone does not have access to that and when they don't have access to that we need to acknowledge that they are doing the best they can with what they have okay so I'm all about encouraging people to engage in health related behaviors and not just things that affect your quote-unquote physical health right there are also health promoting behaviors that affect your mental health and your emotional well-being. Things like getting enough sleep, things like having a positive support system, and taking medication also if you need it. And so what I want to do is destigmatize this whole thought process that if you take medication, you can't be healthy. Because there are some people who have conditions, they're doing the best they can, but they are really not going to be able to meet their health goals without medication for a variety of reasons. We shouldn't make the assumption that people who take medications do it because they, it's the easy way out, do it because they don't want to do work. You know, those are very stigmatizing beliefs and most often it's not the case. People either require education or they need resources to actually do all of the non-medication things we're asking them to do. And then sometimes even when people do that, they are still not gonna be able to meet their blood pressure goal or meet their blood sugar goal if they don't have medication. And so we should not shame people or we shouldn't even have negative thoughts about ourselves if we need medication to treat a medical condition. And the next thing I want to say is how you can actually be a positive support person. So let's say that a person in your life that you love, a friend, a family member, a colleague is engaging in something with their health that you don't approve of. Maybe they drink too much. You know, maybe you see that they actually aren't following their diet recommendations. They're supposed to be following low salt or low carb or something that else that the doctor has prescribed to them and you notice that they don't do it. How can you be a positive support person? The number one thing I can tell you about being a positive support person is that you are supporting the person. You are not supporting the behavior that you have a problem with. You're supporting the person. So for example, if a person drinks too much, right, you're not supporting their drinking, right? So let's say you're not, you may not take them to the liquor store. You may not drink when you're around them. You want to do all of the things that you have under your control, right? But ultimately, if people choose to make a decision, even if it's not a decision you would choose, like taking medication, maybe you would never take medication for your depression, but you have a friend or a family member that is making a decision to do it. How you can support them is by supporting the person, 
not supporting the medication. You can just support the person. That's okay also. And it's so needed because when people are having a hard time and they're struggling, they need to know that the people closest to them support them. So you don't have to spend a lot of time talking about why you wouldn't do it and what else you would do or how you tried it and it didn't work for you. You're not supporting the person, right? To support the person means to ask them, what can I do for you that would be helpful or supportive right now? If a person has depression, you may say, hey, why don't we make a time or an appointment to walk together, right? We know that exercise and movement can help depression and helping someone stay accountable when they're not motivated. Maybe that's how you can be a help. You can take a meal to them you know, while they're working on getting their mood better. They have trouble with sleep. Maybe you can volunteer to pick their kids up and take them to school in the morning because you know they tend to sleep in because they're depressed and they have a hard time getting going. Those are the things you can do to actually support a person. And so know that you don't have to support the decision to support the person. Because we disagree with a decision, we decide that we don't wanna deal with the person. And it's perf you have every right to know what boundaries you need to have. So if you need to step away from someone because they um, are negatively impacting you in some way, Okay, that makes sense. But because somebody wants to take medication or see a therapist, that's not negatively impacting you. And if you have tried some of those options and you still feel so strongly about disagreeing with someone's decision about what they wanna do with their body, whether that's taking medication or having surgery or seeking a therapist, you always have the option to what? Be quiet. That's always an option. Thank you for listening. I hope that you found the information in this video helpful. I look forward to reading your comments and I will be here soon with another mental health topic. Take care and have a good evening.